Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust. I find you well, my brothers and sisters, and thank you for joining us for the third time on this series, Family Togetherness. And we want to look at parenting and its challenges as promised last night. Come with me to the book of Psalms. We are at Psalm 127. And we begin with verse number one. It reads as follows. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is in vain for you to rise early, to retire late, to eat the bread of anxious labors, for he gives blessing to his beloved even in his sleep. Behold, children are a heritage and a gift from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed, happy, and fortunate is the man whose quiver is filled with them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gatherings at the city gate. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we thank him for these gifts. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing, the gift and reward of the womb, the children that you have blessed us with. Thank you, dear Lord, for the accommodation, the houses that we have built and the cities in which we dwell. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you, dear Lord, for being in partnership with us. As we go into thy word, we are going to learn about the challenges of parenting. Some homes which are meant to be little heavens have become places of strife, quarreling, and fighting. I pray for peace within the couples. I pray for peace within the families. I pray for peace even within the children that they do not even give their parents a hard time. Dear Lord, we live in times where drugs and all forms of addictions are rearing an ugly head in our homes. I pray for children who have been overtaken by such that you may set them free. Some of them have even lost the faith and are even proud to say, we are atheists, we do not believe in the God of our fathers and the God of our mothers. I pray that such may be reclaimed and brought back to the path of righteousness. Be with us, dear Lord, as we go into your word. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. My dear friends, allow me to raise five brief points with the hope that as the Lord speaks to each and every one of us, we may come to love him. We may even find that our Lord of parenting has become lessened. Doesn't he say, if you have a heavy load, take my yoke upon you. It is lighter. Not only is it lighter spiritually, it is lighter even in the home. Some of us are single parents. We have to play the father, the mother, the, 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 the nanny, and we have to play the boarding master and the matron at home. The Lord is heavy, and God says, I am going to offer you a relief. Take my yoke upon you. It is lighter. Come with me to the book of um, first, uh, the first uh, verse, I think. That's the one that we looked at, and it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. Look at some of these houses that are on the screen. I'm sure you may have seen your dream house. And the question at the back of your mind is, Lord, Lord, can you build me such a house? These, according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, these may be houses that we could refer to as self-actualization houses, where we assume status because of the houses we live in. But the God we serve is not a limited God. He is the God who wants to bless us. And when he blesses us, he exceeds our imagination. 
Such should be our dwelling places. Such should be our places of residence. But even then, even then, when we have put in a good man's work, when we have put in a good labor, the Bible says, he who builds such an house does so in vain unless the Lord is with him, unless the Lord is with her. For many have built such houses, but they spend sleepless nights in these houses. Some have built such houses only to live in them alone after they have been forsaken by their loved ones. Some have built such houses only to remain in these houses lonely when they have been deserted. It does not follow that a beautiful house means peace, a beautiful house means love. You may find someone living in a squalid accommodation and yet deeply in love and enjoying. How does that happen? Because the Lord is found in the house. Many of us have houses, but we are yet to have homes. A house is not a home. A house is a structure. A house is physical property that is to be found at a residential space. But a home is what the Lord builds. A home is what the Lord makes. A home is a function of the blessings that the Lord bestows upon every family. And he says, these blessings are new every morning. Every morning, the angels of heaven pour out blessings while we are asleep so that we can rise up to a fresh, healthy, and bright day. He who builds a house alone does so in vain. And what are the challenges of parenting? Some of us, I know, we do not own houses as yet. We are renting in the name of the Lord. May the Lord provide fixed accommodation of our own. Some of us, I know we are living in houses that are mortgaged and not fully paid for. In the name of the Lord, as a parent, you seek to provide for your children. May the Lord see you through on that mortgage. May the Lord see to it that you continue to have the financial streams that will help you to provide a room and a roof over your family's heads. Some of us, our rentals are even overdue. The month is way in. We cannot even have peace because we are sinking in debt. Here is the promise and I want to give it to you as a parent. As you're spending that sleepless night looking at the bills, God will come through for you. He wants to build this house for you. He wants to provide accommodation for you. Claim the promise of Psalm 127, the verses 1, unless the Lord builds. Let the Lord build this evening. Tell him, Lord, I have the plan. Lord, build it for me. Lord, I am ready to work, but I do not want to work in vain. I want to be in a partnership with you so that when we are done, we will not remain with a magnificent structure that is not a home. May my house be a home. May my house be a little heaven. I need a Garden of Eden in my own house. I need a little heaven in my own house. Point number two. Notice this. Not only does he speak to accommodation issues, he says there are those who are going to eat the anxious bread of labor. People are so anxious. People are, are depressed. People are, have hypertension. Why? Because even when we sit down to eat at the end of the month, our toil, our sweat is not something we can enjoy. We are not people who can have enough. Why? Because we're anxious. Verse number two says, it is vain for you to rise early, to retire late. We're working three, four, five jobs, one person. And by the time we get the rewards, we are so anxious. Why are we anxious? 
Will I have some for tomorrow? Why are we anxious? Will this last me to next month? Why are we anxious? Will I be pensionable at work? Why are we anxious? Because we have taken all things into our hands. May I talk to a parent who is on the verge of depression and remind you, and remind you, when the children of Israel were traveling from Egypt to Canaan, 40 years they did travel, but every night they went to bed with an empty cabin. They went to bed without food, only to pick up their manna early in the morning. Why did the Lord make it such? So that they would not be anxious, but continue to rely upon the Lord God Almighty. For he is the God who provides. And he says, for 40 years, you have lacked nothing. Now, as you pass by Seir, you are going to find the land of your brothers. Buy of them meat with silver. Buy of them water with your silver. You have money. You have lacked nothing. I'm talking to a 40-year-old. I'm talking to a 50-year-old. I'm talking to a 60-year-old. You are anxious, but the question is, how have you come this far? How have you come this far? You are eating the bread of being anxious because you have not begun to partner with Jesus Christ. Partner with the Lord as a parent he will build a house for you. He will give you accommodation and he will turn your accommodation into a home. As a parent, he will give you peace of mind. Peace that surpasseth all understanding. All understanding. Am I saying do not work? By no means. Utilities still need to be paid. Bills have to be paid. What am I saying? Point number one and two, if you could summarize them. Be in partnership with God. Your parenting challenges, children or no children, on this footing, the ground is level. We all need accommodation. We all need peace of mind. This world is driving us crazy. We need partnership. We need God to be on our side. Point number three, I love point number three. Point number three is a quick reminder. Behold, while God blesses those he loves while they are asleep, behold, that's how verse 3 begins, children are a heritage and gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward. I'm not talking about A students. You already know an A student is a gift from the Lord. An A student is a heritage. An A student is a reward for the womb. But there are some children that you know and most probably in your house, you are beginning to ask, ask yourself, was this blessing delivered to the wrong address, Lord? You know, there were times when you, when you could, uh, you know, ha ha have a letter and you just uh, indicated return to sender. We, we are about to return some of our children to the senders. They are in our homes but they behave as if they are landlords. I'm talking about those children. They are a gift from the Lord. They are in our homes as we go out to work. They are of an age that should be working. They cannot do any work. If they are not on video games, they are on the internet, but they are doing nothing that has to do with work. Whatever they touch, they leave it there until you come and pick it up when you are tired and having knocked off from work. Such are the children in our homes. And they are a headache. Some of them, they have no plans of marriage. But they're living as if they are married. They are outnumbering you in terms of the children that they are bearing in your own yard. Different surnames. Different fathers. And the type of fathers, you wonder how they pick them. They become your burden. You are taking care of the mother and the grandchildren. Or you are taking care of the son, the wife, and the grandchildren. They are bringing their wives to come and live in your house. Children who are parents. These are the headaches that make us even have an anxious night. We cannot even enjoy our salaries. Oh God, oh God, help us. Help us. But even then, 
Verse number three still says, these children are a gift from the Lord. These children are a heritage. They are the fruit of the womb. And if you are thinking your family is the worst, maybe your children are given to drugs. They do not respect you. Your children are actually an abhorrence to the community. Not only in your house, now people wish your children were not even members of the community. If you think you have seen it all, may I introduce you to the family of King David. That was a man. I'm not saying your family is the worst, but I want to give you courage. That's why the Bible says he, David, was a man after the Lord's heart. He's a man after my heart. But as he is doing all things right, go into his home. Allow me to just take you through. As you walk into his home, you're going to meet Amnon. Amnon is with his cousin, and they are scheming to rape um, David's daughter. And these cousins who are scheming to rape Timna, it is Amnon and his cousin. And they're saying, you know what? Don't worry, cuz. You're just going to pretend that you're not well, and your sister will come over, boom, and then you do the act. Timna comes over and Amnon carries out a rape. I'm talking about situations where some things that are even criminal are happening in your house. Your house. You could be looking at me now and you're saying, how did you know? God has sent me out to encourage you. Your house has been the house of David before. If you're thinking you have seen it all, if you're thinking you have seen it all, guess what happens? When Timna is now a rape survivor, having been raped by half-brother, who is supposed to be her protector? Now, enter Absalom. Absalom, Timna's brother, blood brother, says, you know what? I got you covered, sis. And what does Absalom do? Absalom orchestrates the blacklist. What does Absalom do? He places Amnon on the blacklist and takes care of him. I mean, kill him. And this is happening in David's house. Some of us, we are actually having to visit prisons because our sons and daughters have murdered people. We have Absaloms in our houses. That is a parenting challenge. I do not want to laugh at you, but I want to encourage you and say, even when things are like this, be a man and a woman who is after the heart of the Lord. Number three, this very Absalom is not only going to kill his brother, he is going to even carry out a coup d'etat. What does he do? He drives David out of his throne and as he does so, enthrones himself. I'm talking about your son who thinks he's now the father of the home. You can tell him anything. He challenges you left, right and center but will just not move out and man up and be a father of his own home. He remains an adult child he remains a father with no family, but he always wants to be a pain in your house. That is the Absalom I'm talking about. There is an Absalom in your life, and God is saying through the life of my servant, I want to show you parenting challenges. Yes, you may have your own history like David, but your child is way worse than what you've ever seen. Yes, David went after Uriah's wife. Her name was Bathsheba, and they bore a child by the name Solomon. But this, this, he never sinned to this, this level. What did Absalom do? Absalom, at the advice of Ahithophel, takes all his wife's, his father's concubines. And what does he do? He make sure by then, I'm sure people could not do sex tapes like the conditions, but Absalom invited the whole neighborhood to watch him in the act with his father's concubines. That was porn, 3X rated by David's son. Some of us, our homes have become brothels. When we go off to work, 
Our children are having toll-free numbers. All the neighbors and the community comes through our homes and through our children. What kind of homes do we have parenting challenges? You are not at fault. They are just being Absalom. They are just being Absalom. And here's the unfortunate thing. As all these things are happening, David is running out. David is running for his life as he does so. Shimei does not have even the sense of humor. He even laughs and scolds at David. You are going to have your neighbors, people in the neighborhood laugh at you in your face because of your wayward children and what they have brought you to. Such is the challenge of parenting. It was David's allotment and it could be yours tonight. It could be yours tonight. I'm not even done. It is not going to end with Shimei. Go to number five and you are going to find that Solomon is now in the office of the king as he sits as king of Israel. His elder brother, Adonijah, has done a, an Absalom stunt. He has enthroned himself as king. What was wrong with the children of David? David is still alive. Adonijah goes on to call a celebration because he's the eldest son at the time. As he does so, he is later on uh, dethroned from his debacle. <laughs> Step aside. And Solomon ascends. And you're thinking, now it's okay. The sibling rivalry has not even begun. Adonijah comes over to Bathsheba, the mother to Solomon, and says, you know what, ma'am? I have a simple request. If my young brother Solomon could only give me Abishag, I'll be good to go. I'll be set. And who was Abishag? Abishag was the virgin who was searched for and found in Shunem, who was supposed to take care of David and warm him in his old age. And what is Adonijah actually eyeing? Adonijah is eyeing that if I take hold of the king's harem and it becomes mine, if I could take my father's wives and make them mine, that is a claim conniving, little rascal. What does Solomon do? Solomon says, evil is in his heart. Let him be put to death immediately. And Adonijah was put to death. What am I talking about? Thrones aside. This is not a game of thrones. There is deep rivalry in your house. Siblings do not see eye to eye. They cannot wish each other well. Parenting challenges. You as the parent... You are now caught between a hard rock and a hard surface where you have to choose between your children. What kind of a headache are you going to have? Having to choose between children that lay in your own womb. This is the unfortunate case of most parents that I'm talking to. And the Lord has given you the case of David so that he can say, when you are advanced in age, you are going to die full of days. You are going to see your tomorrows. You are going to see your children. You are going to see your grandchildren. Why? Because the Lord has willed it. Why? Because the Lord has blessed you. Why? Because you have been a repentant person. In spite of what you did yesterday, you have loved the Lord with all your heart. As we near the end, notice this. The Psalter says at verse 4, Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. It is a blessing. Let me do a, a bit of some counseling here. You'll do well to have children when you are young. When you are youth. Why? Because you don't want to hit retirement and be paying primary school fees. That is common sense. You do not want to be taking care of of children in your old age. That is common sense. Back then, having children in the time of your youth was a reason to brag. It was something that you could go out and wave in someone's face. That's why the Bible says, happy are they. For if a man has these field in his yard, the more children you have, it meant you could be covered. You're going to have children to take care of you in your old age. But it doesn't follow nowadays. Most of our children are independent and they take us off 
and shush you off to an old people's home. It doesn't follow. Some of our children are wired differently nowadays. They do not take care of their parents. Parents are languishing in care homes when they have children. These are the challenges of people who took care of some of us. We cannot go back and take care of them. This is a major challenge for the parents of today. The children who filled up a quiver are the children of yesterday. Today's children do not like old people and they forget they shall be old someday. Allow me to talk to some child out there. I'm sure this one you have read or heard before. A story is told of an old man who moved in with his son. And as they had dinner, it was observed that grandpa was not as neat anymore with the fork and the knife. And so grandpa was uh, uh, downgraded to the spoon. But even with the spoon, grandpa used to clunk his spoon on the plate too often and he made mealtimes too noisy. And grandpa had to be downgraded further to the wooden spoon. And grandpa, as he ate on the wooden spoon, it was also observed that he would, uh, from time to time, uh, drop uh, the, 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 the pricey china away, and it would break. So grandpa was not only left with a wooden spoon, but he was also given a wooden blade so that he would break nothing, he would not make noise, and everyone would enjoy their meal. As the meals were being taken, it was also observed grandpa was not as smart. Even with the spoon and the wooden bowl, he would still drop the grains. And grandpa was soon relegated to the corner of the yard, corner of the house, where he was given a table on his own. And while he was living in his son's house, the grandchild, in the meantime, was watching. As mealtimes came, grandson watched grandpa downgraded up to the corner of the dinner room. And one day, the father finds his son carving out some plate to be. And the father gets so fascinated what his son could be working on. What are you working on, sonny? And the young boy says, I'm making a wooden plate. The father inquires further, whose plate could this be? And the son says, yours, daddy. When you get old and you come and leave me with me, you're going to eat in this plate. From that day, from that day, grandpa's status was returned. He was reinstated onto the main table. Only then did his son realize how bad, how bad he had been to his own father. As parents, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge myself. Let us live lives of being exemplary so that we do not inherit some of these headaches. If ever we are going through these times, may they end with us and not go on. Until we meet again tomorrow evening, may the good Lord bless and prosper you. May the good Lord give you peace that surpasses all understanding. May goodness and mercy Pursue you and overtake you with terrible speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.